This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. Then you knew that when you have the presence of God, you come to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can My beautiful people my brothers and my sisters out there how are you doing I love you and God loves you hallelujah you're welcome to your solution hour my name is Tessie Tani and I have great news for you I have wonderful news for you guess what this is your moment of solution this is your hour of solution hallelujah God has remembered you at a time such as this. And guess what? When God shows up, everything has to bow to his name. Everything has to bow to his presence. Demons tremble at the presence of the almighty God. It doesn't matter what the doctors may have told you. It doesn't matter what you may be going through right now. It doesn't matter how long you've been in that situation other circumstance I command everything to bow to the name of the Lord Jesus right now in Jesus name I pray amen I just want to declare over your life the Bible says that I shall declare a thing and it shall be established I declare over your life that your days of crying in sorrow your days of crying at midnight when nobody is there watching it is over in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord, hallelujah, we cause you to laugh. We cause you to celebrate. This is your season of rest. This is your season of celebration. In the name of Jesus, that long-term problem, that long-term yoke, I command it to be broken off your neck right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ says, bring all your problems. Bring all your burden to me because I care for you. He said, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is light hallelujah what it is that you are going through this is your moment of solution after this program you shall come back with testimony in the name of jesus i pray amen god loves you god has not abandoned you god has not forgotten you in fact god loves you more than you know it more than you could ever imagine he loves you more than you love yourself his will is for you to be completely free and delivered from every vices of satan the god of this world but guess what? God also, above everything else, wants you to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, God is not just only wanting to stop at just giving you the financial breakthrough or giving you that employment letter or giving you that fruit of the womb or giving you that healing that you need. God, above all that, wants to make sure that your soul is saved. And I pray for you right now that your eyes be open to the truth of the gospel, that your ears be open to receive the truth of the gospel. I pray that your heart be fertile for God's word to be sown in it. And I pray that as the word of the Lord is sown in your heart, it shall produce results in your life. Some of you, 20-fold, 40-fold, 50-fold, and some of you even a hundredfold. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew 16, 26. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 26, our dear precious Lord Jesus Christ asks us the open-ended question. He says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul. My God, I don't know, have you ever sat down 
to thought about that? Or are you just busy thinking about the earthly things of this world, which does not have any eternal value? The things of this world are going to pass away with this world. Only one thing shall remain, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus asked us this very important, one of the most critical, one of the most important questions. And he left it open-ended so that everyone can answer for themselves. He says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? He asks the question, is anything worth more than your soul? Is your job worth more than your soul? The position, the status, the fame, the power, the degrees, the qualifications, are they worth more than your soul? Another translation puts it this way. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? but lose his own soul. Hallelujah. The value of one's soul is beyond comparison, hallelujah, to anything of this world. Even if one owns everything in this world, he cannot equate to the value of that person's soul. Praise God. If we truly know the value of the salvation that God has given us as a free gift through his precious Lord Jesus Christ, through our precious Lord Jesus Christ, through his one and only son, if our eyes be truly open to see the value of the salvation that God has given us as a free gift, we will be more careful in the decisions that we make, in the choices that we make, knowing that the choices we make in this temporal place called earth, hallelujah, have a lasting effect. It's going to affect our eternal states. It's going to affect where we end up in life. A lot of people have not really given this a thought. In fact, a lot of people do not even believe in life after death. A lot of people are so concerned with the things of this world that they cannot see beyond their nose. A lot of people do not even believe that there is life after death. Either, a lot of, either some people do not believe or some, either some people are ignorant. They just don't believe it. Or some people believe to an extent but they don't really care about what is going to happen to them. Hallelujah. Somebody told me of a story of how, uh, um, you know, a friend of mine, he said he saw, he met a brother at the airport when he was traveling and the brother had on his shirt, um, all road leads to hell, something of that nature. I can't remember the exact wording, but something of that nature. He said he walked up to the brother wanting to preach, you know, um, let him know about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let him know that God has an awesome plan for his life. And he, 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 he broke the eyes by starting the conversation with what was written on his shirt. He said, brother, do you know the meaning of the words on your shirt? And the brother said, yeah, I know what it means. He says, all road leads to hell. And then this young man asked him, you know what hell means? And are you comfortable with going to hell? And this brother said, yeah, as far as I'm not the only one going, I don't really care. I heard a story and I was moved with compassion in my heart. I said, what a wasted life. Imagine how Satan, who is so crafty, whom the Bible says that he came to steal, to kill and to destroy. He is so determined he will do anything within his power to make sure that people are blind, that they never see the truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So either some people know that there is hell, it exists, 
but they just don't really care whether their soul is going to end up there or not. It's not of a big concern to them. All they are concerned about is the things of this world. Hallelujah. So they neglect the life, their life after death. They neglect that. Hallelujah. But guess what? Some of those people who you see running after the things of this world, all they are concerned about is their life here on earth. Most of them on their dying bed. It suddenly dawned on them, my God, that they have not truly lived. It suddenly dawned on them that they have allowed themselves to pursue the things that do not really matter. My God, the things that they cannot take along with them. Why neglecting the things that truly matters, which is the salvation of their soul? Any man who is still thinking that the life that they are living here is all there is to life stand in danger of eternal flames of hell. Praise God. There is life after death. There is a place that the soul of a man is going. This, this, this body is just a container. When somebody dies... Their soul comes out of this body and their soul is heading somewhere. A lot of people do not really sit down to give this a thought. And therefore, they don't really care about their life after this earth. Hallelujah. I'll tell you quickly about the story I read some time ago of a man who was sitting in his balcony uh, in his backyard and he saw an ant on the floor and this little creature was carrying a big leaf and was carrying this leaf, you know. So he caught this, this man's attention and, 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 and he started to watch the ant, you know. With focused and attention on this ant, he was watching uh, um, the, the, the struggle, the determination, the, the tenacity that this ant was using to carry this leaf, you know, traveling, you know, moving from, from one place to another. And as he was, you know, watching this ant, he got to a point where the ant came to a crack, a crack on the floor, and that he couldn't cross over that crack without, you know, falling into that crack because it's a tiny creature. So this ant put the leaf over the crack, walked over the leaf, he got to the other side of the crack of the floor and then he picked up the leaf and he continued. So this man was moved. He said, wow, if this little creature, one of God's tiniest creature, can have this kind of wisdom to be able to come against opposition, to be able to, tr to, to, to go against every barrier and things that stand on its way, so continue to carry this leaf that is of so much value to it. The man was really moved and he was really impressed. And say how mighty God is to give a little, a tiny creature like this, this kind of wisdom. Hallelujah. But guess what? Something happened as the man continued to watch. He discovered that this little creature, this ant, have the same shortcoming. As humans, he observed and saw that the ant got to a tiny hole which leads to his home in the underground. But when he got to this tiny hole, this little hole, the ant discovered that he could not take this leaf into that hole. He could not, therefore, he cannot take this leaf home. So what did he do? With regret and pain and sadness, he left this leaf and went into the tiny hole, hole to go to its home, which is underground. So when I was reading the story, this dawned on me to say this is exactly the same thing that humans do on this earth, just like this ants. After all the struggle, 
after all the wisdom, after all the tenacity, after all the opposition that the ant was so determined to come across, to come against and face, to be able to carry this leaf, only to get to the point where it needs to, you know, go home into the underground where his home is and discover that he could not take this leaf along. Isn't this the same thing that happened to us human? We live our lives struggling, wake up every day with the need to make more money, with the need to get a better job, with the need to live in a better house. Some of us are choosing what kind of homes, uh, houses do we want to build or live in? Is it a four bedroom house or is it five bedroom? We are thinking what kind of cars do I want to drive? In my 40s, in my 50s, in my 60s, should I drive a Cadillac, a Cadillac? Should I drive a BMW? Should I drive a Maserati? What kind of house do I want to live? Should I live in a Lakeview house? Every day we wake up, we are thinking about our wardrobe. What kind of clothes, what kind of shoes do I need? Everything we are always thinking about is ourself. Where should I go for vacation? We wake up thinking about ourselves. We go to bed at night thinking about ourselves. In fact, some people spend the first years of their life thinking about how to make more money, how to acquire wealth. And when they finally get that wealth, they spend the rest years of their life thinking on how to preserve it. Hallelujah. We go through all this only to get to the end of life, just like the ant who got to this tiny hole and realized that it couldn't take the leaf into its home. A lot of people go through life struggling and worrying about the cares of this world, only to get to the end of life, only to get to their dying bed and realize, hallelujah, that they cannot take any of these things to their grave. And they realize that they've actually just spent their life worrying about the cares of this world while neglecting the thing which truly matters, which is a profound relationship with God. A lot of people realize that they have truly prioritized material things above God, who is their creator. They had no relationship with him. And for most people, it is too late. Because when man gets to the point of grave, no man is going to tell death, hold on, I got to quickly take my checkbook. I have, my, I have a fat bank account. Therefore, I'm going to take my checkbook along. No man can tell death or tell the grave. I got to quickly take my car keys or my house keys or my cars. Hallelujah. No man can say, I got to take my beautiful wardrobe. I got to take my gold wristwatches. At that time, it is too late. The Bible says, it is appointed unto man to die once. And after that death, it is judgment time that comes next. It is too late. So Jesus asked this open-ended question. What shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, if he gains all these things, if he gains all these material temporal things that he keeps seeking, but lose his own soul. So my message for you today is to wake up from your slumber, wake up from your sleep that the enemy has put you in. Satan has blinded the eyes of so many people. I am talking to both believers and unbelievers. Hallelujah. In fact, we now live in a world where you find so many say I'm in Christ, but they are not really living for Christ. They, don't, they go to church on Sunday mornings, but they don't really care about their soul. Because when you care about where your soul is going to end up, it changes the way you think. It changes the way you act. It changes the way you talk. It changes your perspectives on life. The, the way you see material things, it changes it. You start to think differently. You start to see things from the perspective of our Lord Jesus Christ. You start to think on things above where Jesus Christ is seated 
at the right hand of God. You take your eyes off yourself knowing that it is not about you. You are just here. This earth is nothing compared to the place which is called home with Christ. Hallelujah. You start to realize that this life is just an introduction into the eternal life which God has called us to live with himself. That is the reason he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to suffer shame, to went through all that he went through, to die for you, to bring you home, to make sure that you do not mix it. Hallelujah. But a lot of people get it twisted. A lot of people miss it. They mix it up. They put God behind the scenes and they start to run after the things of this world. My God, you must wake up and sit down and examine your life. You must prioritize the things of God above yourself. Hallelujah. Because what shall it profit you if you have all these things that you seek? And at the end of the day, you stand in danger of eternal flames of hell. I want to read quickly the book of Luke, Luke 12, 16 to 21, Luke 12, 16. Then he told them a story. This is Lord Jesus Christ telling the story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know I will tear down my barns. And build bigger ones. Then I will have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I will sit back and say to myself, My friend, you have enough. Store the way for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But listen to this. The man was telling himself. He says, I already have too much. I even tore down my barn so that I can have enough room to store more goods. He said, I'm not going to hunger or worry about anything for many years to come. He says, so I'm going to relax. And I'm just going to eat and drink my life away and be merry. But here is what the Lord Jesus says. He said, but God said to him in verse 20, you fool. You will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Hallelujah. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. That is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, not my words. He said, any man who is just hustling and busting and just, you know, making life for just himself, just to store up many wealth for himself, just to build his own earthly kingdom, but does not have a relationship with God. He says such man is a fool because a man who is truly wise, we know that this earth is not his own. He is just only here on a journey. He is just here to be introduced to the eternal place with God, which is the home of every Christian. Hallelujah. Jesus said, God said to him, Tonight you shall die. Your soul tonight shall be taken from you. He says, Who will inherit all those things? My God, this is something that everybody should think about. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it is the will of God for Christians to live in poverty. No, I'm not saying it is the will of God for Christians not to be merry and happy. God wants us to be happy. In fact, God wants us to live in abundance. The Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. But look at that word. It says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. But a lot of people mix it up. They have not made the Lord their shepherd. They have not agreed to really follow God with all of their hearts. They have not surrendered to him. They don't really care about the things of God. They just go in and out of church and that's okay. They give God a few hours of their Sunday mornings and that's okay. The rest days of the week, they do their own thing. 
They don't really have a relationship with God. But the Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. That means when God is your shepherd, when you are his sheep, when you have a relationship with him, when you hear his voice and obey him, God will see to it that you do not lack. That is why the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things that you pursue, they shall start to run after you. Hallelujah. It is not that God does not want us to live in happiness. It is not that God does not want us to have or live in abundance or live a good life. Hallelujah. But God wants you not to be carried away by the things of this world, but to make sure that you prioritize your relationship with him. Hallelujah. Do you live only for today or are you thinking about your future? Hallelujah. When you are working as an employee, there is something called retirement plan. It's a savings account. The one where they take some part of your salary, some percentage of your salary, and they save it in an account. And when you retire, they start to give you, in some country they call it pension. They start to give you pension. Why? So that you have something saved up for the future. They are teaching you not to live for today, not to squander all you have for today. But we have a lot of people who, when it comes to the things of God, they do not think about their future. They do not think about where they are going to end up. They squander their life today. The time, the days, the hours, every minute, every hour, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year that God has given to you. He is going to ask you what you did with them. Did you squander it all? Or did you pursue the things of God? Did you use it for his glory? Did you even have a relationship with him? Did you prioritize God above everything else? I want you to sit down and, take it, and give it a thought. When we do not know Christ, we make the wrong choices. We live our life carelessly. But when we come to Christ, every believer must come to a point of surrendering all to God. To say, Lord, my life is no longer mine, now belongs to you. My time, my days, my weeks, my hours, my months, my years, they are no longer mine. They now belong to you. Every believer that marks a new year is not just for you to go about drinking and marrying and celebrating your birthday. It's a time for you to sit down and go on your knees and say, Lord, I thank you because you just gave me another year, which is another opportunity for me to seek your kingdom, when you seek his kingdom, he promised that every other thing that you need shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. What we accumulate here on earth have no value in gaining eternal life. No amount of possessions, honors, qualifications, titles, fame, power, positions, degrees, hallelujah, can earn us entrance into heaven. The only thing that can earn us entrance into heaven is our relationship with God. So come out from the crowd and enter into a relationship with the Almighty God. Break yourself free from the spirit of religion. Stop deceiving yourself and just visiting God on Sunday mornings. God wants to live with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to live every day with you, not just few hours of your Sunday morning. He wants to do life with you. God wants to be in not just your Sundays, but your Mondays, your Tuesdays, your Wednesdays, your Thursdays, your Fridays, your Saturdays. He wants to be with you when you go to work. He wants to be with you when you go to bed at night. He wants to be with you when you're driving. He wants to be with you when you're in the kitchen. He wants to be with you when you wake up and when you go to bed. Come into a relationship with him. Everything else in this life is all vanity. You cannot take them home. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you right now. If you've not given your life to Christ, I want you to say, Father, I have heard your message today. Forgive me for the way I have been walking and acting and living. Have mercy on me. Today, bring me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your marvelous light. Become my Lord and Savior. I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God. 
From today, you are now my Savior. I am now born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.